All right, welcome back to the scrub dude, everybody. We're playing more auction, not included. Uh, hasn't been too many cycles. Honestly, I didn't really do much after I stopped last time. There's a lot of things I want to try to get into today. I want to try to get into taming the geyser here. This can be a great source of water, especially since your starting water is limited, but I need to get some colony research, so I need to increase my skills. I also want to try to create a spawn, which we'll go over what a spawn is when I actually get to it. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to that in this episode or not. But that cool slush geyser is going to be very handy for that. I've also started expanding the water tank, but once again, I need to increase our skills. Ooh, research complete. We complete. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm also researching into animal control so I can try to get a couple of uh, ranches up and running. I want to try to get over and get that Draco in because Dracos make phosphorite, which would be great for another project I want to work on. There's just a bunch of little things that still need to get done. Ooh, hey, there's polluted water in there. It looks like some of the ice melted. I'm pretty sure the cool slush geyser is up here, which will be nice. I also want to try to combine some of these waters. Oop, we got some idle dupes. Uh, all right, that should give them a bit of work to do for now. I also just need to tear up more of this stuff. Let's queue up some more digging. Get more torn out. I do also need to probably drop another oxygen diffuser. What's my oxygen? Yeah, not doing the greatest. It's really good towards the top. The carbon dioxide does have a tendency to sink. Check the materials over. Gases. Yeah, it's getting pretty bad down here. But also, it's because every time they breathe, they still breathe out carbon dioxide, which we can later use for something else. I also, I've also figured out what the supply teleporter outputs and inputs are, but I won't spoil those. I kind of do want to tear down to there, though, because there's that reed fiber right there. There is slime lung in there, though, which means there was exposed slime lung somewhere. That's going to be a pain. And it's just going to keep spreading. So I'm going to want to create like a... Uh... Actually, no, yeah, I could also create a liquid lock right there to keep that slime lung out. I just need the reed fiber. This will be used for a bathroom water disposal system. Which I will also bet you could also create infinite water out of bathrooms, but we'll go into that when I actually start setting up bathrooms. Okay, I was also trying to get there too. There's just a lot of little things I'm trying to do. Once I get a chlorine system set up, I can also start using the slime. I don't really like using slime while it has slime lung because it can cause diseases. Slime lung isn't the worst. It's just annoying. I just don't like it. So we got a this will give us a dedicated farmer. This is another rancher. Do we have a mechatronics engineer already? Yeah, Gen. Gen wanted to go into mechatronics. It costs a lot of skill points, but it's so worth it. Okay, yeah, we have our early mechatronics engineer. Great. So the two better options right now... I really don't like Loud Snorer because you have to give them their own space. But he also comes with exosuit training. You know what? I battled out for a bit. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take Hassan. We just need a name for him now. All right. Welcome to the colony of the Salty Prince. All right. we ha I've got a couple of plans. I just got to get them leveled up some more. I also need to be careful of the brine. I need to make sure to leave some space. Alright, let me queue up some more commands. Alright, so I've decided to move the bathroom over to the other side just because there's more space. Uh, there's not really a lot of use for showers in oxygen not included. I just like having them, even though they do take up quite a bit of additional copper. And copper is sort of a finite resource in the beginning. Over here is going to be a waste disposal service. I'll show how this is mostly done. Ooh, two spots open for... Hydroponics farms. These are actually kind of important to the waste disposal. This is where you can use this is where you can dump like polluted water into either arbor trees or thimble reed. If your planet has thimble reed, you want them. A lot of the times they can be found in like uh ah, igneous rock dig spots. They'll be shown by little cracks here. Or if you have a thimble reed growing, you can also go over and dig it up. However, plants have a wild growth and a domestic growth. So under wild growth, it can grow under anything as long as it hits the proper body temperature, unless there's a certain amount of radiation, which is which radiation is new to uh, spaced out. And ah, there's the uranium it comes from like uranium. Some plants can get off radiation like the weasworts here. 
which sucks because this is how I did a lot of my cooling. I'll have to figure out a new way to do that. When you move into more domestic growth, they also require things like polluted water or water or um, like how bristle blossoms will require different things. And there's meal wood, which I need to actually get some meal wood down thinking about. It. I'm at 49,000 calories. I'm doing fine. I, I can wait a bit longer. But for now, let's just let them build. Alright, so we have that built. Now, I want to cover a couple of things with piping real quick because it's actually really important to know because I didn't know this at first. There are two ways to do inputs. You can either just drag them straight across or you can have each one attached. I prefer to attach each one, but that's just because I'm weird. Outputs, though, you cannot drag straight across. Outputs usually have priority. If you drag them straight across, if the pipe is full... It will take from the closest output first and then start going down. So with this, I actually prefer to take it over like this. And then just connect each one. Because this at least gives each one a small buffer to be able to be pulled out. And I'm also a big fan of hiding piping as much as possible. Uh, the bridge here is actually going to be important as well because we're going to use that to bridge the water on so we don't overfill this. When we actually get to the point, we're going to be cycling our water, which I believe we do not have the water uh, sieve yet. OK, that's why these are going to be important, because we're going to go down and get a thimble reed at some point. Really hoping that's a thimble reed right there, so I don't have to crack into that. Or hopefully that's a thimble reed. Hopefully one of those two is a thimble reed. But first, since that's built, flatten that out. We're going to get that water flowing. We want to try to combine as much water as possible. Oh, oh, and then with that flowing... Oh, I can't wait to actually get some research in on that. Wait, what building lacks resources? Oh, they just haven't gotten any water. They'll bring it up soon. And the water is away. Nice, that will combine more and more of our water. I don't know if this tank is actually going to be big enough, but... It's going to be my tank for now. Might have to leave this water be until later on. Oh, I also queued up another thing of research in the background. I went and got the rock crusher, which is going to be important here soon. And you'll see why. A couple more researches that still need to get done. Need the water sieve, improved plumbing. I need to get up to insulated tiles and deodorizer. Like this, these four can be very, very important in the beginning. So there's going to be a lot of research being done in the background while they go through, dig do some just general labor stuff. But also, since we're also now getting this cleared out, which that can just get mopped up real quick, and then we can drop it through other means. Oh, I didn't realize there was a cut over there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to add any more liquid for a little bit, not unless I want to expand the tank more, which I really don't want to right now. I want to start getting sort of uh, ooh, new duplicate. Do we have a dedicated cook yet? Do we have... Have we taken anyone who can cook? Oh, perfect timing. Wednesday fan. Perfect timing. We need that super hard digging. Hunter. Critter ranching. Perfect. Oh, everyone needs their new hats. We do not have a dedicated cook yet. Perfect. Okay. So these other two are actually still really good. There's a lot of things you could throw them into, but I need a cook and the increased athletics is going to be great. So welcome to the colony sheer point, which so I guess I should point out sheer point isn't his na subscription name. That's his uh, name on discord. I'm going to go with the name that I'm pretty sure he's more comfortable with, even though I've never actually used this name once in talking with him. Okay, so I also started dropping in some sort of power generation. I need to get them off of uh, running for a bit. I'm wondering... I'll leave this jumbo battery up here for now. Uh, this jumbo battery is also going to be stored in. Eventually, it's going to be connected to the main power spine. There's a, still a lot that needs to get done. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to go over a little bit of how to tame this. 
So I'm going to need to go up and around it. It is really cold in there, though. Okay, it looks like, uh, luckily, it looks like it just went dormant. And we want that analyzed. As soon as that's analyzed, I can go over a couple of little things that I wish the game would tell you a little bit more about. It's really annoying, but it's how you determine how much water you're actually going to get out of this. After that, I'll build the tank. I'll probably have the tank just stretch like straight across. Like, yeah, like straight across here and then up. And then over time, once I start moving the base more, I'll expand it. Toilets. What about the toilets? Oh, one of the toilets was down. I still have three more that are up. Okay. They just got that toilet up and running, though. Okay, so I've started creating the... Uh, water treatment facility is what I'll call it for now. So what's happening is... So this is a very interesting thing that I took a very long time to understand. Uh, I'm going to pause this and kind of show off what I did. It involves using the liquid bridge. So the output is usually always prioritized, but if the output is full... Say you have something like this. If the output's full, it will travel around and down. So one thing you can do is instead of having it go around and down, you can just go straight forward. So now if there's no way for it to flow out the output, it will flow through and go into the water. And in this case, it's going to go into my water sieve. With that, if you wanted to, you could also branch it off in multiple directions and do all kinds of weird stuff. Never, though, because this will actually cause problems. Never take it straight through. This will cause all sorts of problems because then you have two pipes competing for access through. But this will be the start of our water treatment facility. This will treat our water and this will feed polluted water into our thimble reeds once we get them. We will want to clean up in here though because these also produce polluted water. Ooh, why are you, why are you sneezing? Doggy feet. Yucky lungs? Where'd you get yucky lungs from? Great goo. Oh, because I have... Yeah, so this is also why you want to try to get that treatment facility up and running pretty quick, because we have, we're have we starting to get polluted oxygen everywhere. We'll need to take care of that. In fact, we're going to seal that off, too. Oh, don't tell me, though, did... Oh, yeah, some of the muck root got some food poisoning on it. It's not the biggest deal. A small amount of uh, food poisoning isn't going to do a lot. Wednesday fans doing some good work getting through this abyssal light. Once they're through that, and this is constructed. So this is also going to release a whole bunch of cold air, but that'll be fine. Ooh, hey, there's a bioscan tour. I really want to get into at least taming this this episode. Spawn might have to wait till next episode, and I will have to do some stuff in the background in order to get ready for that. So deodorizers are important because they'll actually get rid of a lot of polluted dirt, but they, they require sand, some sort of filtration medium, really. And then so does the water sieve. It requires some sort of filtration medium. Me. Yeah, so you'll see it bypassed right over. So now going forward, all the polluted water that's going to come out of the toilets and the showers and the sinks. Reminds me, I should set those to left. We'll just filter right into here. I'm going to put some, I'm going to put a uh, water storage system here. But I also need to create another pump system right here. So this pump system, what it's mostly for is the polluted water that these sinks have put out, which I'm only seeing the one bottle. Yeah, we never got any down the water here, so it's good. Yeah, I'm only seeing the one bottle here right now, but it's also getting close to being full again. We'll probably have a second bottle. The reason for that bottle here is it's going to get stored right here, and eventually it's going to get pumped over into these. Another chance to show off something. So even though these two are connected, because we have two pipes running into the same system, uh, the, uh, I can speak. The stuff coming from the bathroom is only going to feed to the first one, and the stuff coming from this system is only going to feed to the second. But luckily, they gave us a brand new tool. This used to be a mod. The trim tool. Now we don't have to worry about them fighting. I'll have to fix that later on, of course, but it's fine for now. It's mostly in carbon dioxide right now, which... That's going to get fixed soon. Oh, I didn't even see that we had another duplicate ready. Can I afford another duplicate right now? I don't have any food sources running. Take Harold, though. He's, he's going to be another rancher, and that's going to be important. I'm going to need a moment to think on that. Against my better judgment, I am going to take Harold. I am getting low on food. I'm only at 25,000 calories, and I haven't started any sort of uh, food preparation yet. But I need another rancher, and he's also a really good builder, which will help him get through a bunch of stuff. So we're going to take him. 
I forgot to name him. Good thing you can change their name here. Let me go get him a name. Welcome to the colony, Dark Knight Prepper. Uh, we have room for more research. Cool. And we have the water tank. Perfect. This is just to store the water, by the way. Eventually, I guess I should also explain how the bathroom system works. So the bathrooms themselves take about... So yeah, the bathroom gives off um, 11.7 kilograms of polluted water. But if I remember correctly, they only take five kilograms of polluted water per use. So you actually get more water out of using the things like the bathrooms and the sinks put out five kilograms. But you will get more water overall doing it this way. Now, the other reason, though, that I'm creating the system is once the thimble reed is in and starts cutting through everything and destroying everything, we're actually going to take this water and we're going to filter it back into the system, which means we'll actually have to do a bridge. I'll probably bridge over here down. It'll be fine, though. For now, though, you will see that this tank will just slowly rise more and more in water. Oh, we have some idle dupes. Ooh, and we started getting the cool salt slush geyser. But you will notice we are starting to get a massive temperature change throughout the base. It's not terrible right now because we also have all this heat from the slime biome coming in. Once I have this capped off. So I'll probably use insulated tile once I get it. I'll cap it with the insulated tile to keep the temperature transfer from going out. Then I'll probably come over here and come down through the slime biome. These are easier to tackle from above than below. For now though, I need to find... A thimble reed seed and i'm hoping there's one in here come on wednesday fan dig me up one muck root so you don't have to worry too much about slime lung off gassing while it's still in its solid form which is why i'm surprised this is here which means somewhere through here there is like probably down in here somewhere there's probably some sort of crack somewhere that's leading to it to getting exposed thimble reed seed okay this is important let's go ahead we're gonna drop that right here for now and now there's no longer a re really a reason to dig through all that unless that has a second thimble reed seed. There's a second one right there. We're we're golden. Add a second one. Yes. Okay. Our filtration water plant area is complete. This this you can have your duplicates survive on for cycles at a time. This is pretty simple. You take the output of the carbon skimmer into the input of the water sieve, the water sieve output to the input of the carbon skimmer. Then, power. So what the carbon skimmer is going to do is it's going to start eating a lot of the carbon dioxide. The better place to put it probably actually would have been down here. I might have to move that. There we go. We just needed to get a couple of pockets and then I can snip it. Oh yeah, look at him go. Doing a fantastic job. If his science was higher, he'd be able to research this much faster. It's also really cold in there, but I mean, it has a little bit of oxygen, so he'll, he'll survive. Probably also thinking about priming this area. I do have access to the insulated tiles now. Um, when it comes to cold areas, it doesn't really matter too much. Do not build those three. We want a way for you all to get out. I'll probably have to... I'll probably cap off the top of the base, like, right here. Oh, it's right there. You're, like, right on the edge of it. Come on. Yes! Okay, so, finishing the research on these, which will probably be the only thing we get to today. So, we'll... I'll probably create the full basin off-screen, get some automation set up for it, and let it run for a while, and get a couple other things taken care of throughout the base, too. But for now... When you research them, you get these data banks, which, ooh, I got eight. That's used for a later research. That's something you'll really want to pay attention to. But now comes the fun part. So there's a lot of things to take into when you're trying to capture some sort of geyser or vent. There's a couple of different items to keep a track of. There is the amount you're going to get that's always going to show in either kilograms or grams, the eruption period, the active period, the next dormancy, and the average output. Mostly what you're going to be paying attention to is the amount you're going to get, the eruption and active periods, and the next dormancy. This can also tell you a lot about how 
or when no, no no how how much about how much you're going to get if you want the full amount for what you're going to get when it's both active and dormant it's actually pretty simple well not simple it's math god i never expected this game to have math in it until i started playing so to figure out the amount you're going to get out of it, you need to take the eruption period, the active period, and the actual and the full amount of what you're going to be getting. In this case, we're getting 5.2 kilograms of brine at 14 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll notice the water in the area is a lot colder than that, but that's because it's also in a cold biome. We'll take care of that later. For now, let's figure out how much we're going to get out of the eruption period. To figure that out, we take... The first number here of the eruption period, the 197 seconds of every hundred of every 423 seconds, we have to divide that by 423 seconds, which gives us 0.4657. There's a couple more numbers, but always round to the fourth digit. It just makes it a little bit easier for doing the math later. It, it will be slightly off, but not by too much to the point where it's really going to matter. So we have 4.46257 as our first number, but now we need to also figure out how much of the active period it's going to be. For that, it's very similar. We take the uh, active period of the 76.1 cycles and divide that by the 140.8 cycles, which gives us 0.5405. We have the two numbers, so we know the percentage of the eruption period that it's active and the percentage of the active period that, sorry, the percentage of cycles that it's active. So it's active a little over 54% of the time, which is great, actually. That can give us quite a bit. But now we need to know exactly how much brine that we're going to be getting out of this during both the active and inactive period, and that's really simple. For that, we just take the two numbers we got, the 54.04. And the 0.4657, and we multiply them together, which gives us 0.2517. Now, to figure out the exact amount we're going to get, we take the amount of brine we're getting, the 5.2 kilograms, and we want to convert that to grams, which is really simple. You just multiply that by 100 and you get 5,200. Every 1,000 grams is one kilogram. <laughs> So then we just got to multiply this by the 5200 and we get 1308.92 grams. That's how many grams we're going to be able to pretty much use throughout the entire, well not use, that's how many grams we're going to store up throughout the entire active and inactive period. Now there's a couple other things you can do, like if you just want to know the amount you're going to get during the eruption, you just take the eruption period, and you multiply it by the amount of water that you're going to get out of it. You want to know how much you're just going to get out of its full active period. You do the same, but just with the active period. For anyone who wants more information on the amount of water you'll get out of geysers or the amount of stuff you'll get out of vents, I'll link a geyser math tutorial down in the description if I can't figure out how to get a box for it up in the corner. There's also a place called Ani Assistant, which will pretty much do the math for you and tell you how much you'll be getting out of it. Anyway, I hope my geyser explanation made sense to everybody. It's the first time I've really taken the time to explain a geyser to anybody. Right, so I'm going to have them doing a bit of cleanup in the background. I've got a couple more dig commands queued up. Uh, before the next episode starts, I'm going to have this sealed off and ready. And I want to try to get in some hash ranching into the next episode, too. Right here might actually have to be the top of the base. I might have to remove that ladder rung. Well, they're all idle and I've got nothing else for them to do right now. Uh, let's go ahead and just destroy it though. They can keep going up and down there for now. Anyway, that's all the time I've got for today. Until next time, don't scrub out.